Summertime rendering opens with our main character, Shinpei just had a dream about his childhood friend Ushio. She instructed him to return to his hometown and protect her sister Mayo in her place as she can no longer return with him. When he tried to reach for Ushio, he woke up and accidentally buried his face in the breasts of the girl sitting opposite him, earning him a slap. He didn't quite understand the dream he just had and decided to calm down. He then could see the island of Hitogashima, his hometown. He hadn't been back here for two years. He then left the boat and set foot back on his home island. Today is July 22, and I need him all to remember this fact. Shinpei then met Ushio's sister Mio, who was dragging towards him at an uncontrolled speed. She drove straight into the sea and was pulled up by Shinpei. Mayo then asked him about the city, but he hadn't gone out much so he didn't have much to tell. They continued to chat about silly things until they arrived home, which was also the venue for Ushio's funeral. At the funeral, many people were holding red spider lilies, and Shinpei remembered that ten years ago his parents had passed away and he was adopted by Ushio's family. To him, Mayo and Ushio were not just childhood friends, but also family. He had once promised to make curry for Ushio, but now there was no longer a chance. He then heard some people say that Ushio's body would be autopsied to investigate some things. Suddenly, a beam of light flashed across, but it wasn't clear where it came from. Before he could gather his thoughts, Shinpei's best friend, Su ran up to him crying. So informed him that Ushio had been swept away while trying to save a drowning child. The hearse then arrived, and Shinpei wondered why Su's father intended to autopsy Ushio when it was clear she had only drowned. Sao told Shinpei to pay attention to that little girl. The girl was Shiori, the one Ushio had saved. Everyone thought her blank expression was due to shock from the accident. The priest then asked Shinpei to help carry the coffin. Sao decided he would tell Shinpei everything tonight. That evening when he got home, Shinpei cooked for Mayo and Uncle Alan, who was Mio and Ushio's father. At the same time, another Mayo was outside looking into the house. A police officer passing by wondered why Mayo was out here and not inside. Shinpei then learned from Sao that the reason for Ushio's autopsy was because they found marks on her neck as if she had been strangled, not drowned. Only the police, him, his father, and Mio's family knew about this. Mayo then came and gave him the necklace that Ushio had left behind. Mayo hugged Shinpei and cried because Ushio was gone. She vowed not to forgive whoever took her sister's life. She decided not to cry anymore because she was sure that's what Ushio would have wanted. Shinpei then sat looking at the necklace and remembered old memories. He couldn't believe Ushio had kept this. The next morning, July 23rd, Shinpei went to Uncle Alan's shop to help Maya with work. Suddenly, a customer in the shop asked Shinpei if he had found the person he was looking for, because this morning he had seen Shinpei looking for a woman with glasses and large breasts. Shinpei had no memory of this, so he thought the man was talking nonsense due to being drunk. The police officer then also came for a drink to cool off. This police officer was Tetsu, a relative of Mio's family and the only police officer on the island. Mayo asked why Tetsu wasn't seen having breakfast this morning, and he informed her that there was news that the family of little Shiori, who Ushio had saved, had disappeared without a trace. People suspected that the family was in debt and had run away. Mayo ran off, forcing Shinpei to chase after her. He found Mayo near that family's house, and Mayo revealed that a week ago, little Shiori had shown strange behavior. Specifically, when they went to catch bugs on the mountain, the girl said she saw someone exactly like herself. Suddenly, a hunter named Nezu passed by and mentioned something called the shadow sickness. It was quite common during wartime. Those affected would see their own shadow, and then lose their lives to that very shadow, according to legend. The afflicted person had to go to the shrine of the god Hiruko for purification. He then left, and Mio believed in this disease, because three days before Ushio died, both sisters had gone to pick up trash, and they both saw Ushio's shadow appear right in front of them. Shinpei tried to stay calm and reminded Mio of her promise not to cry anymore. He decided to take her to Hiruko's shrine for purification. They both went to the shrine, but no one was there. Suddenly, Mio spotted a figure passing by and pulled Shinpei along to investigate. They searched but found nothing, and the path ahead led to dangerous ruins they couldn't enter. Suddenly, a gunshot rang out, and Shinpei ran to investigate. He encountered the woman who had sat across from him on the boat. She had been shot and tried to pull Shinpei close to say something when she was suddenly shot in the head. Shinpei discovered that Mio had been captured by her own shadow. The shadow shot and killed the real Mio right in front of him. 
Shinpei was also shot, and then he suddenly woke up at the beginning, returning to the moment when he had his face in the other girl's chest. Shinpei saw the scene of the day Ushio drowned while saving the little girl Shiori. He still didn't understand what was happening right then. Suddenly, he woke up with his face in the girl's chest and got slapped again. The girl asked if he was okay because he had been screaming a lot in his sleep. He realized she was the woman who had been shot in his dream. He didn't want to ask too much, but felt this wasn't the first time he'd been slapped. He then checked his phone and realized it was only July 22, while the day he and Mio went to the shrine and were shot by Mio's shadow was the 23rd. He then found himself in the middle of reading a story by author Nagumo about a girl who believed the people around her were replacement copies, which explained his recent dreams. He went back up to the shore, once again ignoring his dream, but the scene of Maya racing towards him on her bicycle was similar to a four, making him think he was experiencing deja vu. He then pulled Mayo up and realized her bike's brakes had been cut by someone. The events that followed repeated as in the past, with everyone behaving and talking just like in his dream. He met Uncle Alan again, attended Ushio's funeral, and again heard that Ushio might have been strangled to death. The light shone again and most importantly, there was the little girl Shaori. He remembered that her family would disappear tomorrow, and if everything continued to repeat as in his dream, it meant the shadows really existed. That evening, while having dinner at Uncle Alan's house, he suspected that Ushio had really been killed by the shadow and that Maya would soon suffer the same fate. He then asked permission to go outside for some air. As soon as he got outside, he suddenly discovered that Officer Tetsu had met Maya out there, but the real Maya was clearly inside and not wearing a uniform. This Maya stabbed the police officer to death and then took a picture to copy his shadow. Tetsu's shadow then disposed of the real Tetsu's body and Shadow Mayo asked him to hand over the pistol. He told Shadow Mio to just take the gun inside and deal with the real Mio, but a gunshot now would be heard far away. Shinpei realized this was the truth, and then his phone rang, causing Shadow Mio to immediately rush over and stab him in the neck. Shinpei couldn't react in time, and his soul was separated from his body. He began to show signs of time travel and heard someone's voice. He couldn't hear clearly but the last sentence was, protect Mio. He returned to July 22 once again, this time at the moment he stepped off the boat. He realized the voice he had just heard was Ushio's. Mayo was rushing towards him at this point, so he stood up to block her and got knocked into the water. He couldn't swim, so Mio had to dive in to save him. Meanwhile, the girl on the boat was hanging from a tree. She was writing in her diary on her phone and noticed that one of them had infiltrated Ushio's funeral. That evening, Shinpei called Tetsu to tell him to go to the bar because there was a fight there, aiming to keep him away from Shadow Mio, even if it meant getting scolded for false reporting. He then decided to clean up his phone and put it in airplane mode to prevent it from ringing like last time. Knowing exactly when Shadow Mio would appear, he had set up a camera in a nearby bush to gather evidence for a report. He then entered the house and realized that one of her eyes had changed color at some point. He then noticed Mayo was bathing inside but unusually quiet, so he went in to check and she chased he out. Having confirmed Mayo was safe, the next morning he went outside to get her phone and it had actually recorded footage of Mayo's shadow last night. He showed the video to Mio and she was very surprised because the shadow and shadow sickness were not just superstition. Shinpei then asked if it was true that Ushio had seen her own shadow and Mio confirmed it, suspecting that the shadow may have killed Ushio. Mayo was worried because little Shiori had also seen the shadow and was in danger, so she wanted to go check, but Shinpei decided to go check himself and leave Mayo at home. He went to Shiori's family's supermarket, but it was still closed like the first time. He suddenly met an aunt who lived nearby, who was also wondering why Shiori's house was closed today, so they both went to check. They knocked and rang the doorbell, but no one answered. The door was unlocked, so they went inside to find the TV still on and the dining table untouched. Shinpei discovered two black marks left by the shadow, like those of Officer Tetsu recently. Then Shinpei decided to go upstairs to check. He knew the two marks from earlier were from Shiori's parents, so where was the little girl? He was about to turn on the light when the shadow's light shone on him. He noticed little Shiori was behind him and was certain this was the shadow, but he pretended not to know anything. However, the girl started to bring out the shadow to threaten him. Luckily, the aunt called him, causing Shiori's shadow to run away. As he regained consciousness, the shadow seemed to have escaped through the bathroom window. He then left and realized that if he didn't do something now, the girl on the boat would be shot dead. 
he decided to go look for her and remembered she had a large suitcase, so people would likely notice. He then went to several lodgings to ask. The uncle here didn't remember any girl as he described, until he mentioned she had quite large breasts. Then he recognized her immediately. Unfortunately, they only knew the girl had passed by, but didn't know where she was now. He helplessly returned to Uncle Alan's shop. Mayo had just arrived to ask about things when Officer Tetsu came looking for him. He was angry because last night he gave false information, but he changed the subject. They then talked about how Shiori's entire family suddenly disappeared. While Shinpei saw that Tetsu seemed to still be truly alive, he then gave Ushio's phone to Shinpei. A few days before the accident, Ushio had asked him to keep it and give it to Shinpei if he had the chance, as if Ushio knew what would happen to her. Su also came by at this time, so Shinpei had to tell Su about the shadows. He asked if there was any way to distinguish between people and shadows, but there wasn't yet. However, all three chose to trust each other and Mio suggested going to the Hiruko Shrine to ask for sure. But Shinpei knew Mio's shadow was nearby, so he didn't rush and wanted to wait until tomorrow. Sao reminded him that tomorrow was the island's festival day, but the crowd gathering tomorrow would make it difficult for the shadows to act freely. The three then set up a code to distinguish each other. It then started raining so Mayo and Shinpei tried to run for shelter. They took temporary shelter at the bus stop, and Mio asked him how long he planned to stay here. He originally only planned to stay for the funeral day, and then return to the city. But now, with this situation, he had to stay longer. Mayo then decided to give Oshio's necklace to Shinpei. The next day, while Shinpei was still sitting and thinking, Su came looking for him. Although Shinpei didn't say the code, this attitude was enough for Su to recognize Shinpei. Su's sister, Toki, also came. Sao hadn't told his sister anything so they could be at ease about Toki. All four then went to the festival together. Sao had listened to Shinpei blame himself for leaving the island and causing Ushio's death. Sao had to remind Shinpei that Ushio's death wasn't his fault, and now he had the duty to protect Mio. If he couldn't do it, Su would do it instead. Shinpei realized Su still had feelings for Mio. The two raised their voices, causing the two sisters to come in and check. Su lied that they were talking about boy stuff, so Toki brought up the incident of Shinpei running into Mio's bathroom to question him, causing Su to threaten to skewer Shinpei. So then got serious and said that after the fireworks, they could go ask the shrine priest about the shadows. Suddenly Shinpei saw Ushio's familiar figure and decided to chase after her. He chased for a long time but couldn't see Ushio anywhere. He ran all the way to the beach and actually met Ushio there, but he noticed the necklace on Ushio's neck and realized she wasn't the real Ushio because they had held her funeral two days ago. He knew this Ushio was a shadow, but this Ushio seemed to have realized that the last thing she saw was sinking into black water and the pain, and indeed she should have been dead. But she must have returned because she had regrets with Shinpei. Specifically, she wanted to express that she really liked Shinpei. He asked her what she wanted, and she realized today was the festival, so she wanted to go to the festival with him. Shinpei noticed that this Ushio didn't see herself as a shadow, but truly saw herself as Ushio. She then ran back to the festival, forcing Shinpei to chase after her. He had to try to hide Ushio for fear others would see her, and while they were running, Shadow Mio discovered Ushio. Ushio asked why they had to hide. Shinpei said directly that she had really died, and if someone discovered her, it would be a big problem so for now just hide here. Ushio didn't understand so Shinpei had to sit down and explain what had happened. Ushio seemed to remember everything but nothing related to the shadow, and she also had no intention of attacking him like other shadows. Suddenly Mio called and Ushio grabbed the phone. Mio momentarily heard Ushio's voice and stood frozen until Shinpei took the phone. Then she thought she had misheard. Mio had asked him to come to the shrine because they had finished the fireworks. He then had to take Ushio to a corner for her to hide and then return. He then returned to the others and also said the password to be sure. Everyone was around the bonfire and Su suddenly said Ushio must be watching them, startling Shinpei because he thought he meant it literally. So then called Mio to a corner. Toki said Su was about to confess to Mio, but Toki knew Mio already had someone else in her heart. So then frankly confessed his feelings to Mio, but Mio regretfully had to refuse because she only saw Su as a friend. Suddenly Ushio wearing a mask came to encourage So but everyone immediately recognized Ushio because of her voice, hair, and figure which couldn't be mistaken. Ushio couldn't hide anymore so she had to reveal herself, 
but Mayo and Su both saw her as a shadow and asked Shinpei to stay away. But Shinpei held on to Ushio, but he suddenly squeezed Ushio's hand and arm tightly. Shinpei started to glitch, and everyone realized Shinpei had also been turned into a shadow. Ushio tried to tell everyone to run away, but it was too late. Ten minutes earlier, on the way back, Shinpei had encountered Shadow Mio. She had dealt with many people here and quickly rushed to grab Shinpei. She knew about being secretly filmed and how Shinpei somehow knew she would come. She thought the plan was almost complete so no one else could interfere. She then called out Shadow Shinpei. This shadow had Shinpei's memories so it knew about his ability to rewind time. It then absorbed his memories again and knew what needed to be done now. He wanted Shadow Mio to let Shinpei live because he was worried if Shinpei died he would rewind again. He then told Mio to take out Shinpei's phone and sent someone to catch Ushio. He then destroyed Shinpei's phone and went up there alone, while Shadow Mayo immediately broke Shinpei's arm and was about to break his leg to prevent him from moving around. But before she could break his leg, Shadow Mayo was shot in the head by the girl with glasses. But Mayo's shadow suddenly disappeared and attacked again. But the girl managed to shoot the black shadow of Mayo on the ground. Mio's shadow was immediately defeated, and Shinpei realized this girl knew how to defeat the shadows. She then introduced herself as Nagumo. She pulled Shinpei nearby because a shadow passed by, but that shadow was Ushio. She prevented Shinpei from going up there because there were many shadows up there. Nagumo told him how to distinguish shadows from people. The real body of the shadow is the black shadow part she just shot, so they hate being stepped on, so he just need to step on a person's shadow. If it avoids, they are a shadow, if not, they are human. The shadow scans people with that light and takes their information. He then noticed a large light up there so he asked Nagumo to help him destroy the shadows. He then ran up and saw Toki there. She apologized to Shinpei because she didn't mean to cause this, but immediately after she was killed by a shadow with four arms. Shinpei saw a scene of only blood and a pile of corpses. Shinpei then discovered Sao had been killed by his own shadow while protecting Mayo. He died right in front of Shinpei, and the shadow was soon shot down by Nagumo. She only had one bullet left, but the four-armed shadow shot back at her. She saw it coming and dodged in time, only getting grazed on the face. Shinpei asked who he was, but was grabbed by him. He realized Shinpei's right eye was their mother's eye, the eye with the power to manipulate time. Ushio woke up at this time and tried to struggle. That eye allows he to return to save points like in a game, but he just needs to destroy this world to make he have no more save points. Ushio begged Shinpei to save Mio. He reached out to Mio, but she was immediately destroyed by the shadow. A giant shadow appeared in the middle of the shrine. Other shadows all merged into it, and wherever it spread, both corpses and people vanished. That pile of corpses also instantly vaporized. The mother of the shadows also appeared in the sky. Festival goers were immediately swallowed up by the giant spreading shadow, while everyone on the island saw red light in the sky. The shadow soon swallowed the entire island and only Nagumo and Shinpei were left. She felt she was wrong not to believe the message earlier, while Shinpei asked Nagumo to shoot him because he could go back to the 22 and change everything. The four-armed one tried to stop them, but was punched by Ushio. Nagumo wanted him to come find her and say her name when he goes back to the past again. He was then put into observation mode and saw the whole island being swallowed, and he encountered the girl emitting red light and was seen by her. He then began to travel and this time clearly heard Ushio's voice. She warned him that this power also has limits, so he must try to fix everything as early as possible. He then returned to when he was going home with Mio. When he got home, he decided to reevaluate everything objectively. First, about how each time a loop starts, it goes back a bit further, and he knows he must be very careful to avoid starting a loop in a terrible scenario that he can't start over to change anymore. And at the same time, Wushio was also sent back here with Shinpei. We temporarily set aside Shinpei's storyline to follow Nagumo's storyline before. When she first arrived on the island, she realized the man at the dock was a shadow. She then saw Mio bump into Shinpei and fall into the sea. She then noticed Ushio's funeral announcement and remembered this name was mentioned by Shinpei on the boat, so she went to check. When she arrived there, she was accidentally recognized by an acquaintance. This was the priest of the Hiruko Shrine named Karakiri. He recognized her although she had left the island 14 years ago. She stepped on his shadow, and there was no reaction so she knew Karakiri was human. She began to remember why she didn't like Karakiri was because she didn't like his gossipy nature. 
He then introduced her to Uncle Alan, and he still recognized her because in the past she was a regular at his shop. So she also knew that Uncle Alan had two daughters. His wife had passed away so when he was busy selling, customers would play with the two daughters instead. Suddenly Uncle Alan heard about Mayo and Shinpei falling into the sea so he had to be late. Nagumo didn't know about Shinpei before because she left the island when Shinpei's family moved in. Ten years ago, his parents died in an accident. Hearing this, Nagumo decided to leave and wanted to avoid Shinpei for a while. Suddenly, Uncle Alan rushed over to report that there was something he needed to tell Nagumo. Specifically, people had discovered marks indicating Ushio had been strangled to death. The police examination didn't find any DNA from the perpetrator and this case was quite similar to the one involving her brother years ago. So after that, she had to go in and open Mushio's coffin to check. After wiping away the powder on the neck, there were indeed strangulation marks. She then left and asked Uncle Alan if Mushio had mentioned anything about meeting a doppelganger a few days before dying. Before Uncle Alan could understand, Nagumo's former best friend, who was also Shiori's mother, came looking for her. She cried in grief because Ushio died saving her daughter. But Nagumo was disgusted by this act, as she knew the best friend before her was actually a shadow. She then went to meet the hunter Nezu, and informed him that all three members of Shiori's family were shadows. She gave Nezu one of her phones for easy communication. As for Shinpei at this time, he had returned to this timeline and was behaving normally. But this time he had gone to Shiori first to warn her about the shadow, so she wouldn't be scanned at the funeral. After the funeral, Shiori's parents asked him about what he had just said. He realized that the ant below had exposed these two shadows, so he just said that his previous words were nonsense. He then asked about the color of Mio's underwear yesterday. She found him a bit strange, but still answered, and he knew Mio had been copied since yesterday. Shadow Mayo had also created a shadow of Uncle Alan by now. Shinpi stayed for dinner with everyone that evening, but he took the opportunity to ask acquaintances a few questions. First, about the doppelganger disease, few people believed in it. Second, he asked about Nagumo. Everyone knew her, and Uncle Alan even told him that Nagumo's real name was Hizuru, and she was a regular customer of his in the past. He also had Hizuru's contact information if Shinpi needed it. Uncle Alan had gone to the restroom when someone put an undermate and sign on the door. Meanwhile, Shinpei had managed to call Nagumo, but Hunter Nezu answered. He knew how much Shinpei understood the problem, so he told him to wait at the funeral home. At that time, Shadow Alan had come to eliminate the real Lan, but seeing the undermate and sign, he opened the one next to it and was ambushed by Nagumo, who hit the shadow. Shinpei had returned to the funeral home, and Nezu told him to stay put. He had shot the shadow to check on Shinpei. Nagumo had dealt with Alan's shadow. She then left and received a massage from Nezu. So now Shinpei had the opportunity to meet Nagumo. He had the address from Nezu, and went to meet him in the forest. He didn't know how Shinpei could know about Nagumo, and when meeting her again, Shinpei immediately took out a book to ask for an autograph because he was her fan. She didn't know how he knew about her. While that morning on the boat he didn't know anything, proving that he must have gone through July 22 at least a few times, so she could be sure that he was a time traveler. Shinpei didn't need to hide anymore and confirmed it, but she asked if he had met her brother yet. He then presented the events that would happen in the previous timeline to Nagumo, and she decided to tell him about what happened 14 years ago. The shadow had appeared and killed her entire family. Having experienced this, she left the island, and now when she returned, the shadow would try to hunt her down. She couldn't reveal her full identity to him for fear that if he was copied by the shadow, they would have her information. The shadow specifically targets one person and their family. He worried that Uncle Ellen would also be targeted, but Nagumo had already dealt with Elan. If a shadow copy of someone is dealt with, that person can no longer be copied, meaning there will only be one shadow of one person. Nezu had dealt with his own shadow, so whether Shinpei trusted him or not was up to him. He then agreed to cooperate with Nagumo, and informed her that they only had 54 hours until the festival when the four-armed shadow would deal with everyone. He then wanted Nagumo to help eliminate Mio's shadow first, but Mio's shadow only appeared at night, so she had something else to do first. He knew she was about to go deal with Shiori's shadow family, but he knew she would fail because Shiori's shadow was still alive until the festival day. Therefore, he would go with her to help, but she insisted on going alone. Before entering Shiori's house, she tied her hair up and listened to something on the phone. Nezu informed that this was because the person in that body at the moment wasn't Nagumo, but someone else. 
That person had now arrived to knock on Shiori's door and asked permission to enter the house for a moment. Upon entering and putting down the suitcase, Nagumo immediately pulled out a hammer and struck the Shadow Mother's head. The father rushed in but was quickly dealt with. The Shadow Mother, not yet dead, turned back but was struck again by Nagumo. Nezu told Shinpei that the reason Nagumo didn't want him to enter was because she wanted to figure out for herself why she had failed and how Shiori managed to escape. If he had gone in with her, it would have caused some unforeseen events. In Nagumo's body, there were two personalities and two people, Nagumo herself, or her real name, Hizuru, and the second personality, her twin brother, Ryunoshiki, shortened to Ryunoshiki. Fourteen years ago, Ryunoshiki was murdered and had many bite marks on his body. Hearing Nagumo's scream, Nezu had rushed over at that time. Everyone thought Ryunoshiki was bitten by dogs, but Nagumo said Ryunoshiki was murdered. There were marks on his neck similar to Ushio's case this time. Everything was connected, and Nezu vowed to eliminate all the shadows. Meanwhile, Ryunosuke saw that Shiori was still pretending to be a traumatized little girl, but when he struck the shadow, it suddenly didn't die but turned back to attack. Ryunosuke was pinned down and had to use nearby chopsticks to stab both himself and the shadow to make it flee. Ryunosuke chased after it and signaled for Nezu to prepare Plan B. He took out a nail gun to prepare an ambush with Shinpei. Ryunosuke went upstairs and into Shiori's room. He texted the location to Nezu for him to wait. Shiori was waiting behind Ryunosuke, but he told it that if it copied him, it would freeze for a few seconds and then die immediately. The shadow immediately fled through the window, and Nezu was waiting below to use the nail gun to trap it. But it ran quite fast and even rushed towards Nezu, not to attack, but to make him dodge and let it escape. However, Shinpei was waiting nearby and held the shadow back. It bit his hand, but Nezu shot nails to hold it down. He said that just shooting nails into any three points on the shadow would lock it in place. Ryunosuke then told them both that this shadow was very different from the others. Ryunosuke asked it a few questions. First, if it had killed Ushio, which it confirmed, Shinpei got angry and asked what the purpose of these shadows was, but it wouldn't say directly, only suggesting that being a shadow was better and asking why he didn't become a shadow with it. Ryunosuke had to deal with it quickly before it made Shinpei lose his temper further. That evening, Ryunosuke introduced himself to Shinpei. He only replaced Nagumo when needed for interviews or other press-related things, and for fighting too. When he heard that Shinpei was a big fan of his sister, Ryunosuke was about to say more, but was interrupted by Nagumo with a punch. Nagumo had returned, and Shinpei noticed the way to distinguish the two siblings was by looking at their hair tied up was Ryunosuke, down was Nagumo. She wanted Shinpei not to be distracted by what the shadow had said. They now needed to resolve everything, so there was no need to bring up philosophy or theology. The next task was Mio's shadow. Shinpei then exchanged contact information with Nagumo and went home. When he entered, he saw Mio holding a knife with blood on her hand and panicked. But actually, Mio was trying to cook and had cut her hand. Relieved that Mio was still human, Shinpei told her to go inside and let him cook. He wanted to act normally and let the two outside deal with the shadow. Suddenly he heard a stomach growl and thought it was Mio's, but actually it was Ushio who had returned to him. She was the Ushio from the 24th in the previous timeline. She wanted to warn Shinpei about what would happen on the 24th, but he already knew. At this moment Mio came out, so Ushio had to hide. He continued making curry and let Mio sit outside watching. Uncle Alan then returned, and Shinpei wrote a note for Ushio to take the opportunity to quickly hide in his room. He then finished cooking and brought the food up to the room. Mayo found it strange that he brought two plates, so he said he was hungry. When he went upstairs, he saw Ushio waiting for him, so they sat and ate together. Still suspicious of this Ushio, he questioned her. She explained that when she woke up, she found herself on the beach, so she snuck back here and tried not to let anyone discover her. He tried touching the shadow, and she could still feel it, but not as intensely as other shadows. He thought about stabbing the shadow while it was off guard, but his memories of Ushio of the day he decided to leave for the city to study and work, because he didn't want to just be Ushio's nominal brother, but wanted to be independent, stopped him. He had promised to make curry for Ushio when he returned, but that opportunity was gone. Now he could fulfill that promise, even if only with a shadow. She asked what Shinpei would do until the 24th, and he decided to prevent the events of that day from happening. 
Meanwhile, with only 10 minutes left until Mio's arrival, Nezu and Ryunosuke still hadn't seen anything happen. Nezu still didn't fully trust Shinpei, and at that moment, a shadow snuck into Uncle Alan's house. Ryunosuke asked how things were on Shinpei's end, and he wasn't sure whether to tell them about Ushio or not. Shinpei wanted Ushio to try changing into different clothes because she couldn't keep wearing a swimsuit. When they tried messing with the shadow, her clothes disappeared, so she punched Shinpei and hid under the blanket. Ushio then asked if Shinpei had locked the door to prevent Shadow Mayo from entering, but he knew shadows could slip through door cracks, so locking might not help. Ushio didn't know shadows could do such things. Shinpei believed Mio's shadow wouldn't enter the house because there had been no sign of it so far, but he didn't know it had already entered. Mayo later came to ask Shinpei to bring the dishes down to wash. She didn't understand why there were two spoons and two glasses of water. Mayo thought he was performing a memorial service for Ushio. After Mayo left, she suddenly returned. Shinpei was about to hide Ushio when he realized this was Shadow Mayo. It immediately lunged at him with a knife forcing Ushio to step in and take the blow. Shadow Mayo then stabbed Ushio's shadow. Panicked, Shinpei ran to the window and opened the curtains for Nezu to see. He drew his knife in defense while Shadow Mayo asked why Ushio had sided with humans. She simply said she wanted to protect the person she liked. Shadow Mayo lunged at Shinpei, but was immediately shot by Nezu. Shinpei quickly stabbed Mio's shadow and dealt with her. At that moment, Ryunosuke entered and wanted to deal with Ushio too, but Shinpei begged him to spare her. He knew Ushio was a shadow but different from the others, having the mind and emotions of the Ushio he knew, and having sacrificed herself to save him twice, so he asked Renasuk to let it go and help treat Ushio's injured arm. Nagumo had to return and said that if he was wrong, she would kill him to make him return to the loop again. But Ushio was only worried about the real Mio. Nagumo informed that the real Mio was still bathing, so there was no need to worry. Nagumo then realized Ushio's voice was the one that had guided her back to this island. Ushio was then taken to wash her physical body. Her arm would temporarily disappear, but Ushio didn't mind. Nagumo asked Ushio about the guiding recording. It was indeed Ushio's voice, but she couldn't remember anything. Nagumo then stated that Shadow Mio had started to show differences, likely coming to eliminate him because they knew Shinpei had helped her deal with Shiori's house. This proved the shadows had some way to communicate with each other, so she was worried this would apply to Ushio as well, and didn't want to go together with both Ushio and Shinpei. Shinpei then had to accept separating and also warned her about the temple the next day. Mio's shadow might be dead, but there was a possibility another shadow would come. As for Shinpei, the next morning, he decided to continue with his usual activities. He had given his bed to Ushio the night before and went to find something to eat in the morning while also telling Mio not to come to his room to call him. He then brought back Ushio's original shell necklace, wanting her to look at it and remember what had happened. Meanwhile, he went to the store and met Sue again. Both of them then went outside and Shinpei also brought an umbrella as a precaution. He led Sao to the beach and introduced him to Shadow Ushio. Sao was so shocked that he froze. He then felt guilty because he had let the real Ushio die that day, but Ushio gave him a kick to snap him out of it. Shinpei then gave Ushio the phone he had obtained earlier. She found that the password had been changed, but she could still open it with a fingerprint and inside there was a video recorded at this very location. The video was recorded by Ushio, and she also introduced her shadow to Shinpei. She knew that if he could watch this, she must have died, and the only one who could open the phone was her shadow. She wanted him to be at ease because her shadow was very different, and would be his ally. Shadow Ushio was watching and remembering what had happened. It all started on 17, nearly a week before the current time. Ushio and Mio had gone to Shiori's supermarket to buy things. The little girl had seen her own shadow on the mountain, and even mentioned that she had been feeling like someone was following her lately. She only trusted Ushio, but Ushio didn't listen to her seriously. That day, everyone participated in a beach cleaning event, and Ushio was copied by the shadow at that time. But this shadow appeared in front of both sisters before running away. Ushio followed and saw the shadow's hat disappear. She then went to find Shiori and said she would believe and solve this shadow problem for the little girl. The cleaning event was then over, and the two sisters went home to take a bath. Ushio suddenly encountered her own shadow in there. She tried to call Mio, but couldn't, so she kicked the shadow, causing Shadow Ushio to let go. Both thought they were the real one and the other was the shadow. 
But putting that aside, if this happened, then Shayori's shadow must also be somewhere on the island. They then went up the mountain to check because the little girl had said she saw the shadow up there. They found a prohibition sign but still sneaked in and reached Sue's family's old clinic. This place was rumored to be haunted so few people came here. As they searched around, they heard someone's voice. Both Ushios then discovered a shadow. It scanned Ushio and transformed into her, but not in a complete form. It lunged and grabbed Shadow Ushio. The original Ushio tried to attack, but it was ineffective. However, when she accidentally swung at the shadow, it suddenly became angry and broke a wooden stick, then stabbed it into Shadow Ushio's shadow. Shadow Ushio realized what she truly was. She was able to use her power and lunge to split the incomplete shadow in half. The original Ushio seeing this scene could only exclaim how cool it was. Shadow Ushio then knew that she just needed to scan the original Ushio once more to recover her body. Shadow Ushio noticed that thoughts were appearing in her mind about killing the original to become the only Ushio. It seemed that all shadows had this thought as an instinct, and so on the 20, Ushio and her shadow recorded that video to send to Shinpei. Shadow Ushio now remembered everything completely, so Shadow Ushio decided to show Shinpei and Su what happened the next day, which was the 21st. That was the day when the group went swimming together. Everyone was acting normal. Ushio and her shadow had copied the version in this swimsuit, and Ushio had told her shadow to transform into a necklace to go outside. Mio then took a child away, and Shayori suddenly disappeared in an instant. Since no one saw it, Shadow Ushio couldn't recreate it. They then discovered Shiori was out at sea. Shadow Ushio sensed there was a shadow down there, so she and Ushio dove in. They then discovered Shiori being pulled down by her own shadow. Shadow Ushio lunged and attacked Shiori's shadow and brought Shiori to the surface, but Shiori's shadow had dispersed and tied up Ushio. The original Ushio had to remove Shiori's shadow for Shadow Ushio to bring Shiori back to shore, but then Ushio herself was pulled down by Shiori's shadow and strangled to death. Shiori's shadow then swam up and caught Shadow Ushio again. She was turned black by Shiori's shadow and fell down, while it made the real Shiori evaporate and waited for Mayo to come rescue. Su also died down and was shocked to see Ushio slowly sinking. Shadow Ushio felt guilty for not being able to protect Shiori. She was determined to change the events of the 24th and join Shinpei in eliminating all the shadows. So and Shinpei were both angry about these shadows, but suddenly Shiori in this memory reacted and said that she had finally found Shinpei. She touched his hand and transformed into the mother of the shadows that had appeared on the 24th. They then had to escape from the memory and a black handprint appeared on Shinpei's hand. When underwater that day, Shadow Wushio had almost had all her data erased, but fortunately, she managed to keep a bit and recovered on the 24th to find Shinpei. It then started raining and all three decided to return to the old clinic for a visit. Meanwhile, Mio and Toki were taking shelter from the rain at a bus stop when they suddenly met an uncle. He was a policeman and wanted to find Shiori's supermarket. That evening, Shinpei met Su again in the forest. Ushio had transformed into a necklace. All three went to Su's family's old clinic. He had come here with Officer Tetsu years ago, but was caught by his father and sent home. At the time, he didn't think much of it. But now he wondered what his father was doing here then. The three then went inside and started splitting up to look for clues. Shinpei hoped to find clues about the shadow disease. Ushio went upstairs to search, while Su discovered a poison cabinet here. Shinpei was looking through papers when Su called him over because he had found a strange statue. Looking at the statue holding a fish, they thought it was the fishing god Ibiso, but after searching online, it seemed to be the god Hiruko worshipped by the islanders. Hiruko was thought to be a deformed god so this was the first time both had seen a version of Hiruko. Suddenly, Shinpei found something strange on the wall. He then called Ushio and asked her to crawl into this crevice to check. She crawled in and scanned herself to see everything inside. She discovered there was a lock inside. Ushio then complained of hunger, so Shinpei took out rice balls for them to eat. After eating, looking at Ushio's full belly made Shinpei realize that this Hiruko statue might be female and asked Ushio to check if there was anything inside the statue. She found a key inside and used her hair to replicate it. The door on the wall was open and below was a passage, but Ushio knew there were many shadows down there. Sao didn't understand why his family's old clinic had a door that needed a shadow's help to open. He knew his father must be involved. The three then decided to go down to check. 
Below was a bunker that seemed to have been built during the war. There were traces of someone being copied, but it seemed to have been quite a long time ago. Shinpei wanted Oshio to know that this time she shouldn't recklessly rush into battle, because he could revive in the loop, but he wasn't sure if Oshio could. In the worst case, he would have to wait until the 24th to meet her again. Suddenly they saw a rat running into an alley, and Ushio sensed a shadow. The shadow, when Shinpei glanced at it, had the shape of a child but was missing the upper half of its head. He then had Oshio move to the other side and threw a stone at it, but it didn't react. He had to step out to shoot nails, but it dodged in time. He kept shooting, and it rushed out and lunged at Su. Sao swung his stick, but it merged into the stick and then grabbed him. Shinpei felt pressured about shooting the nails, but if he didn't shoot now, Su would be in danger. He calmed down and fired three shots at the shadow, then had Su throw it up for Ushio to finish off. Ushio still felt a chill from a shadow ahead, so they decided to continue. Shinpei wanted Su to try to protect Ushio and not let her die before him. So then asked Ushio if she could copy the nail gun, which she could, but the copy couldn't function. Only when the original gun broke or disappeared would the copy become usable. The key from earlier worked because it was a fixed object, but things that need fuel to operate couldn't be copied. However, the copies would have the advantage that if they ran out of ammunition or fuel, he could ask Ushio to recreate them. The three then passed through a cave with many sharp rocks. The strong smell of salt made Shinpei realize they were near the sea. Suddenly, Ushio realized they had been surrounded by shadows. They now swarmed out, forcing Shinpei to tell Ushio to run. Meanwhile, Nagumo and Mr. Nezu up there had started to sense something in the sewer, so they decided to go down and check. At the same time, Shinpei's group was forced to run headlong. Su's stick was now considered useless, but Shinpei noticed that the shadows were only targeting Ushio. Sao had to use a fire extinguisher to deal with them, because no creature is unafraid of fire. Ryunosuke and Mr. Nezu were now walking in the sewer and encountered some shadows here. Meanwhile, Mio couldn't see Shinpei and Su anywhere, and calling them yielded no response. Suddenly, she discovered Shiori's hair tie. She saw Shiori's figure nearby, so she ran towards it and bumped into Tetsu. Mayo asked him if he had seen Shiori, but he didn't know. However, they both then saw that shadow pointing down to the sewer. Mayo had heard earlier that Shinpei was down here, so she wanted to go with Tetsu to search, but he refused because it was smelly and quite creepy down there. He also had a date with his girlfriend, so he didn't want to go. But Mayo suggested that if they went down there and found Shiori, he would be a hero and his girlfriend would surely follow him anyway. So he decided to turn back and wanted to go down there to rescue people. Shinpei's group had now run to another cave and saw coral here, which was strange because something that lives underwater was on land. Ushio realized these were shadows, but the water here was seawater, so this cave must connect to the sea. However, Sue informed that the gas canister was empty, so now they would be in danger from the shadows. Ushio felt unwell and had to reveal that her arm still hadn't fully healed. She needed Ushio's original body to scan and recover her arm. But now Ushio's body had turned to ashes when it was cremated. She could now erase this arm to stop the pain. But her fighting power would be reduced. Shinpei wanted to go back and hope to save this arm for Ushio. But suddenly someone appeared, and everyone was shocked when the person accompanying the two shadows was Su's little sister, Toki. Meanwhile, Runosuke and Mr. Nezu were stuck at the steel fence barrier in the sewer. Mr. Nezu knew they needed metal cutting pliers to get through. At the same time, they also had to find out more information because this passage could lead to the Hiruko Cave, an old legend of this place. They planned to go find Karakuri's father to ask if he was still alive. Suddenly, they both heard Mio coming down here. Mayo and Tetsu still believed they were following Shiori. They then saw Shiori on the other side of the iron fence. She made the iron fence disappear so both could pass through. As they passed through, Ryunosuke's group also decided to follow. Toki now informed that Su and Shinpei had violated the sacred place. Everyone needed answers, but Toki only revealed that she wanted to take back the defective item Ushio, and both could return. Toki had approached, and Shinpei had aimed to shoot at the shadow, but unfortunately, Toki was a real person, and Shinpei could never have the guts to kill a real person. Toki thought it was time for them to talk. Shinpei threw away the nail gun and decided to surrender, so Toki decided to capture Ushio, but Shinpei and Su both wanted to know the truth, and Shinpei was sure their father was involved in this. 
Toki knew this would have to be revealed sooner or later, so she decided to leave both of them if they left all their equipment here. Meanwhile, Ryunoshiki and Mr. Nezu were dealing with the shadows and noticed that the coral and sea anemones here must be shadows, and both were startled to see Shiori still alive. Ryunoshiki had hypothesized that when he had hammered down, it had taken that opportunity to escape into the hole created by the hammer. Shiori asked why Nagumo had returned here, because it had clearly warned that it would kill her if she returned. It also knew that Nagumo had Ryunoshiki personality inside him. Nagumo momentarily returned and was surprised that Shiori was actually the shadow named Haini. Suddenly, the four-armed black shadow appeared again. He asked about Shinpei, who had stolen one eye of their mother, where he was. Ryunoshiki had fired his gun, but was blocked by that shadow. Hain had taken the opportunity to scan Ryunoshiki, and knew that both didn't know where Shinpei was. Seeing no more value, Haini let the shadow kill both of them, but was also careful because it knew Ryunoshiki could see two seconds into the future. Mr. Nezu then had to rush out to take the bullet for Ryunoshiki. Ryunoshiki tried to shoot back, but the shadow blocked all the shots. He then fired back, forcing Ryunoshiki to run away, but he still got hit by one bullet. The shadow saw black blood and knew it had hit the liver so death was certain and didn't bother to chase. Haini now felt hungry and told the shadow to return because Toki had caught the two people they needed to find. Toki now revealed that her father had dragged her into this, but he didn't want Sue involved. She herself didn't want Mio to know the truth, so she only hoped Shinpei would keep the secret for her. Washio noticed that Shinpei was trying to get close to the truth before resetting the time loop. And then they reached the cave of the god Hiruko with the shadow with the elongated head just like the statue they had seen above. But the owner of that shadow was actually the version of the girl that Shinpei had seen during the festival. He believed that if he could find out her purpose, he would be able to know what she was plotting and stop it. Toki revealed that this was the first form that the god Hiruko had copied, but instead of letting people call it by the god's name directly, it preferred to be called Haini, and it was also the mother of the shadows, because Haney couldn't move around lately, it needed a replacement body, and that body was none other than Shiori. Shinpei was angry when he realized it was the one who killed Oshio Mio at the ceremony, and was also the monster that had swallowed the entire island. Shinpei angrily shouted and was about to be caught by Haney's extending arms, but Toki had to call someone to bring food for Hain to prevent it from going berserk. On average, this island would have four people die each year so those corpses had been brought to Haini by Toki and Su's father to eat. Toki was now mentally prepared to die at Shinpei's hands if he wanted. The reason she said this was because one of the two corpses over there was the original Ushio. Shinpei was very shocked and asked what had happened to the bones they received yesterday. That was just copied by Haini, while Ushio's real body had been replaced with another. He asked Toki if she knew about Shiori being kidnapped and Ushio being killed. She knew about Shiori, but Ushio's death was unexpected, due to her habit of poking her nose into other people's business. Sue angrily stepped forward and asked where their father was to explain things, but Toki thought she had to bear these things because of Sue. This was the only way for them to keep Haini alive, because if it had stayed alive their mother could live. Actually the brother's mother had died, and Haini had created a shadow, but didn't control her thoughts so she would be like the brother's old mother. Haini then scanned to eat the other corpse. Shinpei knew this was the moment he needed to seize. He then signaled for Shadow Wushio to summon the nail gun for him when Haini was about to scan Wushio's corpse. He helped free Shadow Wushio and helped her reclaim the original Wushio's body. Toki thought Shinpei was acting foolishly because they could never defeat the shadows, but Shadow Wushio thought Toki was just being manipulated by the shadows. They were exploiting the weakness of Toki's family to fill their hungry stomachs. She didn't care if it was a god or whatever because humans are not insignificant. Haney transformed the nurse beside it into a monster. As she lunged forward, Shadow Wushio also ran up to counter. Shinpei really wanted to repeat to make sure, but now was a heroic moment that he didn't want to miss. After a fight, Shadow Wushio had recovered her arm, and thanks to that, she punched straight into the shadow of that monster and finished it off. Shinpei was now close and had a chance to finish off Haney, but his hand was immediately cut off, and the four-armed shadow appeared. He had caught Mio and brought her out to threaten Shinpei's group. Toki was angry because they had clearly promised not to touch Mio, but they didn't care because the people on the island wouldn't live to see tomorrow. Toki didn't know what he was talking about because clearly the deal was that tomorrow Haini would only eat one last corpse and leave, while bringing their mother back, 
As Toki was angry, Sao had to rush to take the bullet for his sister. But right after that, he fired another shot. Meanwhile, police officer Tetsu had accidentally found Nagumo. She asked where Mio was and learned that Mio had been captured, so she asked Tetsu to take her straight into the cave. At that time, Shinpei had to witness the two siblings from Su's family pass away. Haini had ordered Shadow Wushio to come over, and had started to grab her to fix Ushio. Haini also took Shinpei's eye, but it couldn't remove it from him, so the four-armed one revealed that Shinpei's eye could help him see many parallel worlds and make the world he desired a reality. However, it seemed his power still couldn't fully control the eye, and because they didn't want him to interfere with their plan, they would let him be the last to die when their plan was completed. After saying this, he crushed Mio's head in front of the helpless Ushio and Shinpei. As Shinpei was about to despair, Tetsu fell down here and caused a distraction. Nagumo shot the shadow in the head and then aimed the remaining bullet at Shinpei, but the shadow managed to block it and shot back at her head. However, she had bought enough time for Shinpei to drink the poison he had taken from the clinic. He had previously discussed this with Su and Ushio, that if things went awry, he would drink the poison and start over. Just a small dose was enough to kill him, so drinking the whole bottle would kill him instantly, but would also be very painful. Shinpei then used his last breath to declare to them that he would repeat as many times as necessary to stop them. Meanwhile, Ushio was trying to reverse Haini's erosion process. She ordered the shadow to kill Ushio, but Ushio managed to return to the past with Shinpei. Ushio was heartbroken because Mio had to die once again, but Shinpei wanted her to put aside what had happened because now they had to find a way to deal with those shadows. He then returned to the moment when he introduced himself to Nagumo and Mr. Nezu, only this time he returned with Ushio. Ushio was overjoyed and rushed to hug Nagumo, while Mr. Nezu suspected Shinpei of being an accomplice of the shadows, but Nagumo wanted to know what had happened. They then had to recount everything, and Nagumo temporarily understood what had happened. She also suspected that Shinpei's eye was imprinted on him by Ushio from some timeline, as he had obtained it since returning to the island. Ushio then showed Nagumo everything that had happened in the previous timeline, and they knew that separating to act now was not wise. It seemed they didn't need to eliminate Shiori because the Shiori shadow was just a part of Haini, so eliminating it would be useless. But Ushio thought they should continue to eliminate Shiori, because she now believed she had the ability to erase that shadow. Meanwhile, Sao had come to see his father and wanted to tell him something. He refused because he was very busy, so Sue's mother had to ask him to listen to their son. He gave So five minutes to ask everything tonight. That afternoon, Shinpei's group returned to Shiori's supermarket again to carry out the modified plan this time. Previously, Ushio had explained how she could erase the shadow, and Shinpei also revealed that he knew Ryunosuke was inside Nagumo. He asked if Haini had killed Ryunosuke, and Nagumo confirmed it was true, as well as the fact that Hein had once been her friend. Ryunosuke would still redo all the actions from the previous timeline, and after hearing Nagumo's recorded plan again, Ryunosuke went in alone. Shinpei was determined to resolve everything, from the four-armed one to Haini. Ryunosuke had now entered again like before, while Shinpei had Ushio go outside. Ushio just realized an interesting thing, that she could recreate the broken nail gun from the previous timeline. Shinpei regretted that this gun had been destroyed, but Mr. Nezu had two other originals for Ushio to scan. Ushio scanned the second one and erased the original so she could recreate it again and again. Shinpei said that in two minutes, Ryunosuke would text to say the plan had changed and Shiori would rush out the window for them to catch so Ushio could erase her. But the person who flew out was Ryunosuke. He wanted the whole group to run away because this time it was no longer the 22nd day that Shinpei had known. The four armed one rushed out to deal with Ryunosuke. Haini revealed that in the previous timeline, it had marked Shinpei's hand, so no matter where he ran, it would find him. As the four armed one lunged forward, Mr. Nezu fired three shots at his shadow, but he could still move and quickly disposed of him. He then grabbed Shinpei, but Oshio managed to take the boy's life and swept through him momentarily before teleporting away with Shinpei. Haini said this was just a greeting, and no matter where Shinpei went, she would hunt him down and seal his powers. Shinpei now realized they were truly too naive and had messed things up again. As for Ushio sweeping through the four-armed one, it was strange that he had nothing at all. Everything she sensed about him was emptiness, but he smelled like Haini. Both of them returned later, 
but it was raining, which Shinpei found odd since it hadn't rained at all on the 22. Suddenly he saw Nagumo and her twin brother Ryunoshiki. He saw them enter Ellen's shop, so he followed them in, and indeed it was the Nagumo siblings. He realized this phenomenon was similar to the first loop he experienced. This seemed to be Nagumo's memories from years ago. Thanks to this opportunity, he met his mother when she was hang. This must have been 14 years ago, and today was the shop's anniversary, so Shinpei's mother invited the two siblings to stay for the party. But Nagumo hated crowds and left early. Nagumo's friend, who was also Shiori's mother, tried to make her stay. Karakiri and Shinpei's father also returned at this time. He cherished this moment as it helped him remember his parents. He told Ushio that both were archaeologists and often spent time diving around here. At the same time, Shinpei overheard what Ryunosuke said, that someone as unpleasant as Nagumo finally had a friend. No one knew who Nagumo's friend was, and then the scene suddenly changed. Shinpei was taken to Su's old clinic. Nagumo said her friend was quite mysterious and usually appeared here when the window on the second floor lit up. The other two thought Nagumo was delusional and told her to go home. But she refused, forcing them to leave first. After a while the window really lit up, and Nagumo's friend was indeed Haney. Haney apologized to Nagumo because she wasn't ready to meet her friends yet, and Haney also said that Shidi wanted her to stop meeting Nagumo. Nagumo wondered who Shidi was and was told that he was the embodiment of greed and had four arms. Now it's clear who Shidi is. Time continued to shift, and Ushio felt this wasn't like the Haney they knew. Time passed a summer and Nagumo went up the mountain to meet Haney, but was seen by Mr. Nezu. He wanted her to avoid this area because he was hired to catch snakes. Meanwhile, Ryunoshiki heard that Nagumo had just bought a lot of food, but didn't know where she took it, so he knew right away that his sister had gone up the mountain again and ran up there to look for her. Ryunosuke found Haney, and Shinpei realized that today seemed to be the day Ryunosuke was murdered, so he tried to call out. But this wasn't his timeline, so he couldn't intervene, and then right after, Nagumo arrived and saw Haney had killed Ryunosuke. Haney only now realized what she had done and screamed. Suddenly, her right eye flew out and escaped. Nagumo then encountered two shadows, and Mr. Nezu had to come to her rescue. It was at this moment that Ryunosuke officially entered his sister's body. Mr. Nezu was then cut in the left eye by the shadow that had copied him, so Ryunosuke had to take him away, but the two shadows soon gave chase. Ryunosuke stepped forward, pulled the knife out of the shadow's head, and dealt with it. The ability to see two seconds ahead also helped Ryunosuke dodge Nezu's shadow's attack and then turned to deal with it as well. After that incident, Nagumo's family decided to leave the island. As they were leaving, Nagumo saw Haney, who threatened to take her life if she ever returned. Shinpei then returned to the timeline and went back to before they arrived at Shiori's supermarket. Shinpei told Nagumo to change the plan because they had been exposed. Haney had also found this timeline and learned that Shinpei would shorten the time with each death, so they just needed to deal with Shinpei bit by bit. Now Shinpei has brought the cake to Nagumo, and they are both currently at school. Shinpei asked about Ryunosuke's situation. She doesn't want Ryunosuke to fight much, so he thinks she's worried about her brother. But in reality, it's because Ryunosuke's fighting pushes her body to its limits. Just Ryunosuke's fight on the day he dealt with Mr. Nezu's shadow caused her body to ache for four or five days. Nagumo knows that the shadows will soon chase Shinpei to this timeline, so they need to gather people to launch a preemptive strike against the shadows. They then gathered Mio's group along with Su and had Ushio show them memories of various timelines. Shinpei was then invited to stand up and speak as he would be the leader for this attack. Shinpei then stood up to speak. While outside, Mr. Nezu had been killed by Mio's shadow, and Shidi had taken his gun and started aiming. Inside, Shinpei had just finished speaking, and Tetsu thought he was asking them to risk their lives for him, but Mayo and the Su brothers all chose to follow him. Tetsu was the most hesitant, but when he saw everyone choosing to follow Shinpei, he joined in to save face as a man. However, just as Shinpei was feeling happy, he realized he was being sent back in time once again. Ushio then ran back and informed him that his return was due to taking a bullet right in the head. It seems they had killed Mr. Nezu, and he realized he was wrong not to keep Mr. Nezu close. The time limit is getting closer to Shinpei. Shinpei knows that Haney has realized the flaw in his ability, so now they just need to hunt him down until he can no longer fix things. Shinpei then met with everyone and informed them that he might only have one more time loop left. In the previous loop, 
he died at 755, and now it's 720. If he dies like last time, the limit will be pushed to just after 7 o'clock, and if he dies again at the same time, he won't be able to go back because the time reversal limit will be higher than the time he can live. He will fall off the cliff and sink into the darkness of despair. Mr. Nezu doesn't know how they found him, but it seems in the previous timeline, Haney had scanned Nagumo and obtained her memories knowing how she would plan. Mr. Nezu is worried that the shadows have scanned his gun, so this place is no longer safe. But Ushio informs that shadow copies cannot move more than 50 meters away from their subject, meaning their shooting range is only 50 meters, and she can detect if they come within range. But Shinpei knows that staying in one place won't help, so he will use the mark Haney left on him to lure her in, and they will launch a surprise attack. He then waited in an open field, and sure enough, Shidi and Han brought their army. Shinpei wants to have a fair fight with them, and Shidi accepted the challenge. He had just sent Mio to attack when Ushio transformed from the watch back into a person to carry Shinpei away. Mr. Nezu tried shooting at Shidi's shadow, but it had no effect. Ushio and Shinpei planned to lure Shadow Mio to follow them, but Haini stopped her and sent other shadows to hunt instead. Shidi, noticing Mr. Nezu was causing trouble, shot a stone at him. He dodged in time and was only slightly injured, so Haini ordered Shadow Mio to finish off Mr. Nezu. Ushio and Shinpei had now lured the shadows for Ryonoshiki to deal with, while Mr. Nezu, knowing Shadow Mio was looking for him, tried to defend himself. But Mayo's group down here was waiting to deal with her. So missed his shot, so Toki had to call out two big shadows to deal with it. Meanwhile, Ryonoshiki was dealing with the shadows when suddenly one slipped through, and Shidi rushed in to shoot at Shinpei. Ryonoshiki saw it and put his body in the way to take the bullet, knowing that Haini could also see two seconds ahead like him, so he intended to sacrifice himself to buy time for Shinpei. But Mr. Nezu fired his gun in time to support Ryonoshiki's escape. Haney then looked outside and saw Shadow Mio being troubled by the two big shadows. She tried to control the two big shadows, but they only obeyed Toki, as Ushio had destroyed her connection with these two big shadows. Ushio had lured them to chase and Shidi, then absorbed the shadows behind to become stronger and follow. Shadow Mio had merged into the big shadow's hand and was maneuvering to aim at Toki, but Mayo and So had pushed her back. At this point, Shidi had followed Ushio to the gym, but she threw out a bunch of hair and turned it into gasoline for Shinpei to light. These shadows are also very afraid of fire, so Haney had to separate some shadows from Shidi to deal with Shinpei. However, Tetsu fired his gun to attract attention and Ushio then switched the gun to Shinpei so he could shoot, and Haney was hit. Ushio intended to rush in to erase Haney, but hesitated and was caught by Shidi. He also shot Shinpei three times and decided to let Ushio die before Shinpei to see what would happen. But Ushio was cleverer, revealing a copy of herself first while she punched Shidi from behind. She started to erase him, and Shinpei noticed there was a human hand inside Shidi's body. Hain then screamed, extinguishing the fire. Everyone had difficulty breathing, and the glass windows began to shatter. They then escaped while Shinpei ran to Ushio. She was injured by the broken glass, while Shinpei had cleverly prepared a homemade bulletproof vest. After that, Nagumo informed them that Haini had removed the air from the gym, creating a vacuum that sucked in outside air, giving them a chance to escape before Oshio could discover the identity of the person inside Shidi. However, tonight could be considered a victory because no one lost their life. Moreover, the group had captured Shadow Mio and decided to let Oshio turn her into an ally. Shadow Mio was then officially tamed. She revealed all the information she had to Shinpei's group. From the moment she was created to how she cut the brakes to injure Mio and hospitalize her, then finished her off when she had the chance. The reason Haney created her was to hunt Ushio, who was obviously seen as a traitor. There was also another important piece of information. The reason the shadows hunt the originals is that if the original is alive, the shadow will only live for a week. And since the original Mayo is still alive, Shadow Mayo only has six more days to live. However, that's more than enough time. Toki believes she was deceived by the shadows from the beginning. And it seems that the father of the two brothers also knew the shadows' true purpose, but still chose to serve them. So Sao decided to meet his father that night to get clarity. In the evening, Shinpei asked Shadow Mio to protect the original Mio. Shadow Mio noticed that he seemed afraid of her. She also asked if Shinpei had a girlfriend in Tokyo, to which he replied he didn't. He then went with the others to Su's house to find his father. But when they arrived, the door was unlocked. 
Inside, all the furniture had been erased by the shadows. It seemed they wanted to destroy something here, but didn't know where it was, so they erased everything. The group then went to the hospital and heard the sound of a stuck elevator. Upon checking, they found Sue's mother's wheelchair stuck there. Suddenly, a shadow flashed by and hit the morgue door. The group carefully went in and found nothing, but Toki knew about the secret passage below and easily led the group inside. This was supposed to contain Ushio's body, but it seemed to have been taken through a passage leading directly to Haney Cave. The group then went down together and discovered Sue's mother trying to kill the father of the two brothers. Washia rushed in and cut off her connection with Haney, but they found that Sue's father had stopped breathing, so the two brothers had to try their best to perform CPR to resuscitate him. He really came back right after and realized he couldn't hide anymore, but he still chose to side with Haney and then stole the gun from Sue to shoot Toki. He was about to shoot Ushio when Toki deflected the bullet, because this was actually Shadow not the real Toki. The real Toki was in the car with Mayo and entrusted to Mr. Nezu for protection. The doctor was now allowed to be scanned by Mio to find information, but it seemed his Shadow had been created and killed, so he had gained immunity. Hearing this, he was suddenly shocked, and it appeared the Shadows had deceived him too. The nurse appeared on the other side, out of Shinpi's shooting range. She brought Ushio's original body and delivered a message from Shidi to the group. Ushio wanted to chase after her but was stopped by Shinpei, who knew it was a trap. He knew the doctor would no longer keep quiet as before. The doctor asked them to call the real Toki here. The mother of the two siblings then also regained consciousness, and she now learned the truth that she herself was a shadow. The doctor had informed that if Haney died, all the shadows would die as well. Haney's attempt to fully revive herself was because she wanted to return home to her own homeland, a place where only shadows lived. The doctor had intended to help her so she could take his shadow and his family's shadows along. That's why he didn't care if his two children died. But his wife thought he was too selfish and began to make him understand how much the two children and the people on this island needed him. He then took out from the safe a notebook containing all the patients he had fed to Haney, including Shinpi's parents. They didn't die in an accident, but were silenced and staged to look like an accident because they had found Hain's cave. When Shinpei wanted to know Shidi's true identity, he revealed that he was the first person and the director who established this clinic. That night, as it turned into the 23rd, Ushio came to find Nagumo and told her that she had seen her previous memories. Ushio knew that the eye that had separated from Haney was herself, so she was quite worried that one day she would also go crazy like Haney. But if that happened, Naguma would handle Lucio herself. Meanwhile, Mayo was facing her own shadow. Shadow Mayo had revealed all the flaws that Mayo was keeping inside, that she always saw herself as inferior to Ushio, which was why she didn't dare express her true feelings to Shinpei. If she hesitated to speak, Shadow Mayo would say it all herself. Su was now brought to see his mother's ashes. His family had been serving the shadows for 300 years, and only one member in each generation was allowed to know this secret. Because So was too kind-hearted and valued human life, the old man didn't want to involve him in this matter. Toki had advised Shinpei to get some sleep as he seemed to have been awake for who knows how long. Since everyone was here, he could rest assured. Shinpei decided to go to sleep peacefully. Mr. Nezu was about to sneak home when Ushio discovered him and wanted to follow. She followed him home and entered his house despite his prohibition, because she sensed a shadow. He had to take her down to the basement where they met his wife who had been turned into a shadow. She was going berserk and he wanted to end it right there. Ushio wanted to help him save his wife, but he didn't like it because it had killed his real wife, so it was still his biggest enemy. He asked Ushio to leave so he could finish it, so she left. The next morning, Shinpei woke up and saw everyone was safe, so he was able to extend his time reversal limit. The group then decided to clear out some of the shadows on the island. They split into three groups. Neguma's group would clear one area, he and Ushio would go to another, while the two Mios and Sue would go back to help Uncle Alan and protect each other there. Shadow Mio had hinted that Mio didn't like Ushio and Shinpi going together much, but original Mio dismissed it and took out Ushio's original hair for Shadow Ushio to copy and recreate her shortened hair. Before leaving, Mio told Shinpei that after this, she had something to tell him, so she wanted Shinpei to return safely. He then went with Wahio to their old teacher's house. Indeed, she had been killed by the shadow. Most of the children on the island had been taught by her, and they both had many memories and lessons from her, so they decided to avenge their teacher. 
They then went up the mountain to search and heard children screaming. When they arrived, the teacher's shadow was about to kill three children. Shinpei and Wuxiao came to rescue them and took down the shadows at the same time. But the teacher's shadow escaped and counterattacked, forcing Shinpei to shoot. They then made up a story to trick the children and wanted them to keep secret that Wuxiao was a shadow. Suddenly, Wuxiao then said some very strange things unconsciously. But before they could delve deeper, Nagumo called. The group then met and realized that all the houses they investigated only had black marks left. The neighbors just thought these houses had left the island to visit relatives, so they didn't pay much attention. It seemed the shadows were hiding to wait for their plan to be executed tomorrow, so they wouldn't easily appear to be recaptured by Ushio. After that, Shinpei knew what he had to do. He had always wanted to go to a certain place, which was where he had been killed by Shadow Mayo for the first time, the Hiruko Shrine. His purpose was to meet the priest Karakiri. He welcomed Shinpei warmly and invited him inside. Once inside, Wuxio noticed that Karakiri was not a shadow. They chatted casually for a while until he wondered if Shinpei had come to ask about the god Hiruko. But Nagumo had already told him about that. Specifically, people had hypothesized that Hiruko was actually something from outer space with the ability to copy. It had fallen to earth hundreds of years ago, then copied and transformed into a whale shape only to be washed up on this island and copy the first girl it encountered before making that girl disappear. Karakiri thought this was just Shinpei's hypothesis, but Shinpei mentioned the existence of the shadows and then turned to throw two photos at him. He asked why Karakiri appeared in a photo from ancient times, and of course he also knew who he really was the first person to establish the Sioux Clinic, and also the damned four-armed shadow Shidi. Megumo and the others were now waiting outside to ambush. Shinpei asked how Shidi could have lived from then until now while still looking so hanged. The simple answer was that he was neither a shadow nor a human. In previous loops, Shinpei's group had discussed who the four-armed figure really was. Most had suspected him to be Karakiri because Haini was the god Hiruko and Karakiri was the priest of her shrine. Secondly, that four-armed figure didn't seem like a normal shadow as he couldn't copy or scan anything, but only wore a layer of mud to conceal his identity because he knew everyone knew him. And thirdly, when Ryunosuke was killed by him in the previous loop. When Oshio showed it to Nagumo, she was certain he was Karakiri because Karakiri always made her feel uncomfortable, and this four-armed figure was no different. Because there was no concrete evidence, they needed to check if Karakiri's hands were burned from the fight at the gymnasium last night. Also last night, the doctor had told everyone the truth that Shidi had previously raised Haney so she could bear children and then had her bear children for him. From then on, the Shidi clan had split into two branches, one serving the god Hiruko, or more accurately Haney, and the other becoming doctors and in some ways also serving Haney. But what was more disgusting was that when Haney gave birth to Shidi's son, he noticed the child looked exactly like him, so he made Hain copy his personality and transfer it into the child so he could restore his age. Shidi continued this ritual to be reborn many times, although what he did was disgusting. Shinpei still wanted to ask him why he had killed his parents. He simply thought they died because they were stupid enough to try to reveal the truth about Haney. He knew Shinpei didn't have the guts to shoot him because he was hesitating. He knew Shinpei was wondering why his hands had no burn marks. Wushio repeatedly told him to shoot without hesitation, but he kept hesitating, forcing her to take action herself. She killed Shidi and then borrowed Shinpei's phone to call people in. But suddenly the real Shidi with burn marks appeared from behind and stabbed Wushio. Shinpei fired his gun, but Shidi had already put on the black mud layer and thrust the spear straight at him. The others attacked at this point, but it was too late. He knew he had won this time and regretted that Ushio had disappeared. Shinpei then returned to the point where he saved the children in the forest, and this time Ushio indeed did not return with him. Haini in crow form came to gloat about Ushio truly being gone. She knew he was once again standing before the cliff, so if he died this time, everything would end. She then sent hordes of shadows towards Shinpei. He suddenly put his hand in his pocket, and she sensed something that made her decide to turn back and leave. Shinpei found Ushio's necklace in his pocket. He then called everyone to inform them, and they were all shocked to hear that Ushio was gone. Shinpei had arranged to meet Nagumo's group on a small island near the sea during low tide. However, the person who just called Nagumo's group was Haini, who had transformed into Shinpei, while Shinpei couldn't make a call due to lack of signal. Shinpei ran back to the shop to find Uncle Alan and ask about Mayo's whereabouts. 
Uncle informed him that Mio had left with Sue to meet him 30 minutes ago, destination unknown. Shinpei was confused about how he still had a copy of himself, as he clearly had gained immunity when dealing with his shadow before. It seemed that Han had copied him, but the question was how she managed to copy his phone and use it when his actual phone was still with him. Suddenly Shinpei discovered Shadow Mayo tied up and helped her remove the nails. She showed him that Mayo had tied her up here out of fear that she would lose control when Ushio died. Shinpei also realized he had been careless because in the previous loop, when his shadow copied the phone and then merged with Haini, she had obtained a copy of his phone. Shinpei then received key call from Nagumo, but Haini answered she wanted him to choose by giving him the locations of Mayo's group and Nagumo's group to see whom he would save. Shinpei decided he needed to do something to change the situation. Ten minutes earlier, Sue and Mio had arrived at Uncle Alan's garden and encountered Shidi there. He had transformed into a black mud form, ready to kill them both. Meanwhile, Nagumo's group had become suspicious of Shinpei's call. Nagumo had positioned Mr. Nezu and Toki to be ready to fight as she signaled. She then took a hammer and went alone to the meeting point to meet Shinpei. She spoke information into the phone to transmit to Ryunoshiki. Upon meeting, Ryunoshiki immediately recognized this was Haini. He wanted her to stop pretending, and while they were making small talk, suddenly Shidi bit him from behind. He seemed to have two entities existing simultaneously. He knew Ryunoshiki had a two-second advantage, but Haini had seen through that trick, so Ryunoshiki's advantage was gone. Also, Shidi was wearing the black mud layer, so Ryunoshiki's chances of winning were now almost zero. Shidi then attacked, and Ryunosuke knew he was intentionally attacking so that he could dodge and shoot the moment his feet touched the ground. But Ryunosuke knew there was a small delay between when Haini saw it two seconds ahead and when she sent the information to Shidi, so he had to be faster. He used the hammer to block the bullet and then rushed to hit Shidi's head, but it didn't hurt him at all. Shidi noticed that the gunshot wound from last night had affected Ryunosuke, and Ryunosuke also knew his sister's body couldn't last much longer so he tried to signal Mr. Nezu to distract them so he could escape. But Nagumo had taken back control because she didn't want to run away. Ryunoshiki realized this was the first time they could talk directly without needing to relay messages through the phone. Nagumo informed him that she had a way to win, so she told Ryunoshiki to fight with all his might without worrying about her body. Ryunoshiki then continued fighting, broke the hammer, and grabbed a spear to attack. He managed to tear Shidi apart and force Haini to retreat. She wanted Shidi to get up, and at this point, she wanted to know why Nagumo had returned here despite knowing she would be hunted. Nagumo took over and decided to talk at length to buy time for the body to recover a bit. Essentially, she said she returned to make amends, believing Runosuke's death was her fault. Her fault for being too close to Hainshi then continued fighting by breaking the spear and stabbing Shidi, allowing Runosuke to enter Shidi's armor and separate from him. Shidi's mud armor was partially destroyed, Nagumo's body was at its limit, and Ryunoshiki finally had his own body. Meanwhile, Shinpei and Shadow Mayo met Shidi in Uncle Alan's garden. He informed them that Mayo and Sao had been taken to Haini's cave. Mayo quickly took his head, and just as she finished, she realized that the original Mio had been eaten by Hain real body. But Shinpei didn't rush to restart yet, as he still wanted to see how the situation with Nagumo would unfold. Suddenly he meet Toki on the road, and she informs he that Mr. Nezu and Tetsu helped her escape. But she's also about to pass away, so she only advises he to go to the island soon to meet Ryunosuke. Shadow Mayo has shown Toki's memories, so both of them need to hurry. He know now that he shouldn't prolong to avoid exceeding the limit. He know that if he die now, he'll return to when he led the children down the mountain. He'll try to save Shadow Mayo first, then prevent Sue's group and Mayo from meeting Shidi. He then went back once more and managed to intercept Su, Mio, and Shadow Mayo in time. He asked Su and Mio to return to protect the children at Alan's shop while he follows Shadow Mio to Naguma's group. He believed he'll arrive in time when Toki's group comes down to fight alongside Ryunoshiki. Mio then glided on the shadow for speed, and Shinpei told her to avoid all the shadows Han had set up to block the way. He arrived just in time as one of Toki's big ones was skewered. However, this attempt of hers also failed when her repetition made Haini realize, from which she tipped off Shidi to defeat Nagumo and Ryunoshuki. Mr. Nezu knew that our side's forces were now completely unable to defeat Shidi, but suddenly Haini noticed Shinpei glowing so she told Shidi to retreat. 
Shinpei ran to Nagumo and planned to repeat again to help her. But Shadow Mayo stopped him because she knew Shinpei had reached his limit. The more he tried, the more he would lose. Nagumo let Shinpei know that Haney was actually just a child and Shidi was the mastermind exploiting Haney. If possible, he should try to help Haney escape from him. Shinpei promised her and she also entrusted Ryanoshi to him before passing away. Losing Nagumo was too great a loss for Shinpei. The doctor had to store her body in the basement and knew the press would soon arrive because of the news of Nagumo's passing. But Shinpei now seemed to have gained Ryunosuke's ability and knew in advance what the doctor was about to say and also knew that lightning was about to strike the sea. Su at this time felt guilty for not being able to help Shinpei and letting Nagumo die. He knew no one blamed him, but Shinpei was carrying too much. As for Shinpei, he realized they had lost too much. Ushio, a big one, Nagumo, and all the weapons Ushio could create. But Shadow Mayo asked what was in Shinpei's pocket. It was just a piece of Ushio's necklace. But Shadow Mayo realized this was the memory Ushio had left behind. It manifested as if it were Ushio, which is why Haney misunderstood and ran away at that time. However, this was just a memory, not a body. Hearing this, Shinpei remembered that if they wait until tomorrow, Ushio would once again return, and he just needed to let her scan this thing. And she would regain her memories. This gave Shinpei more hope. Meanwhile, Su was sitting in front of Oshio's altar and wondering if they got memories from previous loops. Would Maya remember Su's confession or not? Just then, Mio came in and Su was about to ask when she said she was a shadow. But Su asked about Shinpei, which immediately revealed that she was actually human. And indeed, the answer was still no, so they both continued to just be friends. Mio then went to confess to Shinpei that she really liked him, but he had known what she wanted to say beforehand and apologized for not being able to return her feelings. Although she somewhat knew the outcome, she still wanted to say it to avoid regret. She then went back to cry with Toki, and Shadow Mayo thought that when Haney was destroyed, Wushio would also disappear. At that time, Mayo would have another chance, but she didn't want to win Shinpei that way. But no matter what, tomorrow everything would end. Shinpei then explained to everyone why he believed Ushio could be found again. Basically, every time he brought Ushio back to the loop with him, there would be two Ushios existing at the same time. One Ushio with them, and one Ushio drifting at sea waiting until the 24th to come ashore. But this time Ushio was gone, so they could only find the Ushio drifting at sea to bring back. Surely Ushio had scanned Shidi once before dying and knew about this, so she left her memory for him as a last hope. He showed them how the necklace turned itself towards Ushio's direction, and Mr. Nezu realized that the necklace's effect might be based on the tides. At 6 a.m., when the tide rises, Ushio will be closest to them, so that's when they'll act to retrieve her. If they fail this time, they'll completely lose Ushio. Shadi has now informed the islanders about what they'll do during this festival. Mr. Nezu didn't expect to talk to Ryunoshiki again in Shinpei's body. They chatted for a while about Nagumo and started to see the necklace reacting. Shinpei then met Shidi and she had lost track of Shinpei for two hours. It seems he had taken shelter somewhere with a signal barrier to prevent her from finding him. So she decided to change targets and sent the shadows to hunt for Ushio first so Shinpei's group couldn't find her. He also personally joined the shadows to search. Suddenly a shadow separated from the group, making him realize it was Shinpei inside. He had hidden in the remaining big one and followed the signal from the necklace towards Ushio. Shidi immediately followed, but Ushio was right in front of them. She was thinking about Shinpei and the day he left. Suddenly, Shinpei's voice rang out and Ushio saw the big one rush to grab her and swim to the surface. The big one was then sacrificed so Shinpei could return Ushio's memories to her, and now she could handle the remaining shadows herself. The big one was still alive, and this time Shinpei once again succeeded in achieving a satisfactory result without losing too much. Ushio saw that Shidi in front had lost a large part of his mud armor from her previous attack, so she was about to rush up to attack again in retaliation. He was also waiting for that, but Shadow Mayo pulled her back and informed her about the plan to calm Ushio down. Shinpei then knew how to hide himself from Haini, so he decided to do it again, but Shidi intended to shoot at his hand to stop him. Unfortunately, Ryunoshiki had foreseen this and helped Shinpei dodge so he could shoot himself and redo it. Earlier, Shinpei's group had learned that they could hide inside the big one, and while inside they could still control it to fight. But at the same time, external influences would also harm those inside. 
But now Shin Pi's group had Ushio back, and he had returned to where the whole group had hidden before letting the big one swim out to sea to find Ushio, and where the whole group had hidden was under Haney Cave. While Haney hadn't yet detected them, the whole group had to quickly get there and destroy her real body. But Haney and Shidi had already set up things to hinder the group. First was a shadow monster. Toki decided to stay behind with the big one to fight so everyone else could go ahead. Shinpi's group had to trust Toki and leave this place to her to go ahead. Sao wanted his sister to take care and not die. Shinpi's group then reached a pitch black wall. Shooting at it, it quickly regenerated. Ushio tried to break it, but was countered. So Shinpei had an idea. He called out Shadow Mio and told her to transform into fireworks they had copied before to detonate. Shidi and Haini were on their way down to the cave and knew Shinpei's group was at the wall. But Shinpei successfully detonated and created a hole in the wall big enough for them to pass through. Shidi suddenly flew in, so the whole group quickly passed through the wall before it closed. Shidi managed to move a bit so Mr. Nezu stayed behind to shoot back. He wanted the group to go on while he stayed behind to buy time. The group successfully reached Haney body, but Shinpei sensed the buzzing sound Haney was emitting. This buzzing was how she transmitted signals to shadows. Because Ryunosuke was inside him, he could sense it too. But Ushio had helped him erase that signal and made him feel better. But Shinpei now sensed Shidi, so he had Ushio use her hair to defend. Ushio then had to stand up to deal with Shidi, while Haney noticed that Shinpei had gained power from Ryunosuke and he only needed to close his left eye for the two-second power to stop, and she also wouldn't be able to see two seconds ahead. Shadow Mayo took responsibility for hurting Haney and Haney, also tried to pay attention to Sue's position. But just as she saw the nail gun in one corner, Sue appeared on the other side and shot nails to lock her down. She knows she was wrong because she couldn't feel pain since he is human, and his nail gun is the original. What she saw before was just a copy. Now Haney is recovering so she won't be able to transmit signals for two seconds to Shidi, so Shinpei can now deal with him together with Ushio. Shidi has been punched away by Ushio. She then rushed to target Hein's body, but Shidi also tried to rush after. However, when about to strike Haney, Ushio hesitated and then only made Shidi's mud layer disappear, allowing Mio to stab him to death. Shadow Mayo thought Ushio had succeeded so she was about to disappear but Ushio then appeared with one eye red like Haney. Shinpei's right eye also became similar. Shadow Mayo knew that Ushio hadn't acted decisively, and somehow, Shidi was still alive even though they were sure they had dealt with both of Shidi's bodies. Shidi realized that Haney was now worthless and no longer valuable. He knew both of Haney's eyes were now gone so her power was almost non-existent. Haney tried to beg Shidi not to abandon her, but he turned his hand into a blade and cut Haney in half. A gate suddenly opened and Shidi will wait for Shinpei on the other side. Then the gate started sucking everyone in. Ushio tried to stop Shinpei and again said that if he entered he would never be able to return, but at the same time she wanted to go in alone so Shinpei refused. Ushio asked Ryunoshiki to take Shinpei out of here, but Ryunoshiki wanted to keep his promise to his sister and save Haini. Shinpei told Ushio that he would always watch over her and wanted to be with her. Shinpei and Hushio then stepped into the gate. Shinpei woke up in Haini's world. He saw the edge of this place and realized that here, the timeline was cut off. Because time has no effect in this world, he won't be able to loop if he dies. Shinpei decided to go find Yushio and Ryunosuke felt she was nearby, and the gun she printed out still hadn't disappeared. However, Shinpei was injured in the leg so Ryunosuke offered to transfer bodies and share the pain with Shinpei. Looking around, both felt this place looked like the island out there. Finally, they heard a song and saw a ball that Shinpei recognized as Haney. When the ball started moving, they both followed it. They came to an ancient town and saw shadows that looked like humans, however Ryunosuke noticed that they didn't seem hostile. The ball led them to a group of shadows, and they then disappeared and Shinpei saw Ushio in the middle. Ushio felt unwell and Haney suddenly stepped out of her. Ryunosuke remembered that his sister had told him that if Ushio was possessed by Haini, Naguma would kill her. Since Naguma was gone, Ryunosuke would take his sister's place to take her life. Ryunosuke prepared to shoot but Shinpei stopped him and Ushio said she was still okay. She explained that this wasn't the Haini who killed Ryunosuke. She revealed that Hein had two personalities all along. One personality was of the human girl Haini that Hiruko had copied and one personality was the god Hiruko worshipped by the islanders. The personality inside Ushio was Haini, 
who had become Neyuma's friend in the past. Haney wanted to talk to all three, and when agreed, Haney stepped out. She explained that she had a long dream. That long dream was Ushio's memories. She felt guilty about the things that Hiruko's personality caused. Ryunoshiki wanted her not to apologize because the person really to blame was Shidi for orchestrating everything. Shidi wanted to take back Ushio's eye and use it to transfer to a higher dimension, where time and space would be under his command. Ushio then explained that she had read Shidi's thoughts and he wanted to destroy the world. Suddenly an air raid from World War II began to descend here, and Ushio protected the group from the bombing. Shinpei said that if Shidi intended to take the eye and return to its real world, that means there would be a way for them to use the eye and return. Haney informed them that they needed to kill Hiruko's personality. As this air raid was from Hiruko's memory and this place was connected to her memories, although it was a day Hiruko wanted to forget, it seemed Shidi had forced her to remember it. Ushio then realized that Shidi was forcing Hiruko to relive that day. Haney told the group that she would try to suppress this memory of Hiruko's for a moment. However, they should still be careful of Shidi's armor. First, they needed to erase Shidi's armor, and Ushio was confident she could do it because she had received the fruit from Mio. Then Haney suppressed the memory to stop time. Ushio then jumped from one bomb to another and headed towards the plane where Shidi was standing. However, there was nothing inside his armor. Shidi asked if she had discovered his secret and attacked Ushio in return. When he was about to touch Ushio's eye, she ate a piece of the original Ushio from when she was hanging and transformed back into a child. Ushio regained her eye and then jumped to slash Haruko. Ushio hacked into Haruko and erased the memory of the air raid. While falling, Ushio contacted Shinpei and said that Shidi's real body was in the real world and was controlling the armor through Haruko. Shinpei wondered what was happening with the current armor, and Ushio noticed that the part of Shidi's armor she had erased had not yet recovered. So Shinpei knew that if Ushio could completely erase Shidi's armor, they would win. Ushio lost consciousness and Shinpei ran to catch her. Haney explained that the current Ushio couldn't fully recover, so she had to be in the form of a child. Ushio could no longer fight, so Shinpei wondered if Runoshi could take over Shadi's armor. It was possible, but too risky. Ushio woke up and spoke to them telepathically, also saying that she could print more bullets for the handgun, but it would take two minutes to print and Ryunoshiki and Shinpei needed to survive until then. Shidi realized Shinpei's group had a plan. He didn't expect Haney to betray him, but she said he had changed. Shidi denied this and said he had awakened and was now pursuing his own desires. Shidi then attacked and ignored Shinpei shooting at him, as the bullets had no effect on him. Ushio changed weapons and turned the gun into Nagumo's hammer from before. Shidi then asked Hiruko to print him a gun. As they fought, Shadi tried to attack Ushio. Ryunoshiki had to punch him and broke Shinpei's finger, but this pushed Shadi away from Ushio. Shadi then planned to shoot Shinpei and Ryunoshiki dodged, but the bullet then transformed into Shadi, and from behind, he cut off Shinpei's left arm. Ryunoshiki saw that they couldn't use weapons anymore, but Shinpei said it was time to turn the tables. Both sides continued to fight, and Ryunoshiki still dodged Shadi's attacks and finally touched Shidi to gain control of the armor. Shinpei was now in so much pain he was almost unconscious because Runosuke wasn't suppressing the pain anymore. Ushio had finished preparing the gun, but at that moment, Shidi isolated Ryunosuke in a piece of mud and threw him out of the body. Having regained control of his armor, Shidi told Shinpei that Nagumo had tried to do the same thing before, so he had already found a way to counter Ryunosuke. Shinpei was now only a few steps away from the gun, but he started to disintegrate. Ushio turned herself into a bullet for the gun and told Shinpei she was ready for the end. Then he ran towards her and Shidi also tried to attack him. Shidi was able to attack Shinpei before he could reach the gun. However, Haney moved the gun towards Shinpei and he grabbed it, dodged the attack and shot him. When Shidi was erased, he was helpless in the real world because his body was too old to move. Ushio returned to normal and carried Haruko in her arms. She said she would erase Hiruko's pain and when she started to erase it. They were suddenly transported to the scene of Itogashima Island 300 years ago. They saw a whale on the beach and Haini approaching it. Ryunoshiki realized this was when Hiruko was about to possess Haini and everything would start over again. Ryunoshiki tried to stop Haini and Haini suddenly felt someone grabbing her hand. She had just seen Shinpei telling her not to approach the whale when she panicked, thinking she saw a ghost and ran away. 
Ryunosuke explained that thanks to his awakened eye, Shinpei could touch and change the past. Hiruko was still trying to reach for the whale, but Shio handed Hiruko to Shinpei and went to the whale. She explained that now she understood Hiruko was trying to tell them she needed to erase the whale, otherwise everything would still happen as before. Hiruko cried out, but when Oshio erased the whale, she calmed down and disappeared. Haini also started to disappear and thank them. She asked Ryunosuke if they could become friends when reborn, and Ryunosuke agreed. Both of them disappeared soon after. Wushio was the next to disappear, and Shinpei said he wanted to go with her. If he returned to his body now, he might die, but he would rather disappear with Ushio. However, Ushio didn't want him to disappear and said she would return him safely because everyone was waiting for him. Despite the difficult and challenging days, Ushio was still happy to be with Shinpei. Shinpei then tried to express his feelings, but Ushio had already disappeared. Ushio had found a way to transcend time with this power. She decided to break the loop and redraw Summer. Then she left a message on the phone and returned Shinpei to when he was sitting on the boat, telling him to find her. Shinpei then woke up and met Nagumo again on the boat, of course, face planting into her chest. He saw Nagumo sitting in front of him and cried with joy because she was still alive, and he told her about his true identity. He then went ashore and saw Nagumo seemingly glaring at him with hatred. Shinpei didn't know how he knew she was Nagumo. He then saw Maya rushing towards him and stood to block her, but her car's brakes weren't cut, leaving him confused about what he was doing. He met the Sioux brothers again and was glad they were okay, but still couldn't remember why he thought so. He didn't know why he came back here and was told that Ushio had sent him a message, so he returned. He walked down the street and met Ushio again, and she wanted to run and punch him for daring to leave without saying goodbye to her. He then went to Aelin's restaurant instead of going home because his parents were still alive here and currently not at home, so they told him to go somewhere to eat. He arrived at Alan's restaurant and met everyone again. He remembered why he came back here, specifically on the 21st yesterday. He had received a message from Ushio telling him to return to the island to visit his hometown for a while. He was worried that the island would disappear, so he decided to return. He then went to Shiori's supermarket and saw the children still there, safe, and soon there would be a fireworks festival. The children had mentioned that the fireworks festival coincided with Haini birthday, but Shinpei hadn't noticed this before. He then went to the shrine and met Karakuri there. He was old and had a son, and his son remembered that Ushio had been cleaning trash on the beach these days because she had lost her necklace out there. So Shinpei remembered something and asked to leave. He then met Ushio again on the beach. They both talked about having a dream that they would never see each other again. Shinpei then found Ushio's necklace and decided to put it on her himself. Two days later, Shinpei had a conversation with Nagumo, and she heard about how he knew her through a dream. She started to have some theories about parallel worlds. At this moment, Shiori and Ryunoshiki's mother also arrived. They were married, and Haini and Shiori were both their daughters. Ushio and Mio had finished preparing for the festival, and Shiori's mother asked everyone to stand together for a group photo. In the evening, the festival was held, and everyone was happily enjoying themselves. Sao asked Shinpei if he had made up with Ushio yet, but he hadn't officially done so. He wanted Shinpei to go to the beach with everyone to watch the fireworks so he could have some privacy with Mio. Shinpei knew that So still had not given up Mio. When Mio asked, neither of them said anything. He then saw Nagumo constantly writing her novel without rest, so he reminded her that the fireworks were about to start. Ushio then called Shinpei and told him to meet her at the beach to give Su some privacy for his confession, although it was certain that he would be rejected again like last year. However, it seemed that this time Sao had made some progress as Mio hadn't immediately rejected him. The two of them, Shinpei and Ushio, then met near the beach. Shinpei had brought food for Ushio, and they officially reconciled from this point. The next day, the 25th arrived, and Mio had made a cake herself to celebrate Ushio's birthday. 